Herzlich willkommen bei Unzensiert, der politischen Gesprächsreihe hier beim Filmfest Hamburg. Ähm, mit freundlicher Unterstützung der Zeitstiftung. Ich habe heute den rumänischen Filmer, Filmemacher Rado äh, Jude bei mir zu Gast. Uh, welcome, I'm very pleased to have you here. Thank um, you for <laughs> inviting me. You know, the last days people were always whispering to me, oh, really, you have him, you have him on your stage, you will talk with him. But um, anyway, I will introduce you shortly, even though a lot of people seem to know and admire you. No, um, <laughs> this is not true, this is just uh, <laughs> politeness. No, I don't think so. Yeah, it and is. I think at least uh, you're known for, um, for the, your award as um, best director at the Berlinale um, for a movie. Afarim three years back, but also for a lot of other short movies and feature movies. Um, and um, as well, um, because you made a name for yourself as a kind of explorer of the dark sides um, of your national uh, history, I would say. Um, and you do the same in your new movie. And this one is called I Do Not Care If We, don't, if we Do... I start again. I do not care if we go down in history as barbarians. Yeah. And um, it's pretty much an attack on um, the Romanian Holocaust denial. So please tell me, why did you choose this topic? Is there still much, so much denial going on? Well, apart from uh, the, the psychoanalytical uh, uh, interpretation which would link my name, Jude, which you would read uh, in German, Jude, which means <laughs> Jewish, to the, the themes I explore, Although my, my name is uh, Ro Romanian and I'm not Jewish, but there, there must be <laughs> something in this uh, connection. And all the negationists and anti-Semites in Romania found that connection <laughs> and started to, 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 to use it. Um, it it's a, a, a thing which is uh, more complex, and I've tried to, to make it uh, very short and simple. I belong to a generation that uh, was hidden uh, uh, to the dark parts of our history because uh, I spent my uh, uh, childhood and first uh, uh, until I was 13 uh, in a communist dictatorship and which was highly nationalistic and nothing uh, wrong was ever said not only in the textbooks in, uh, in the history classes but in any of the materials like history books uh, on the market or films or literature, nothing. It was highly nationalistic. And this continued some years after in schools, at least, in the textbooks in the school. And uh, when I found out these things, and I was uh, around 18, 19, 20 years old, we became, um, me at least, and some other people from my generation, kind of obsessed with that, uh, not only with the, not with the desire back then to make films because I didn't even know that I, this would be my uh, profession, but just to understand uh, how this happened, how it was possible, why, and so on. So the films came from this uh, personal interest, personal research, uh, which was provoked, especially by the fact that we were hidden. If they were not hidden, probably I wouldn't be interested. But the fact that we were hidden to us meant something. Otherwise, why would they would hide it? Even your mother hid it to, from you, didn't she? B yes, everybody. No, but uh, people also were very ignorant. I mean, they do not didn't know much and didn't want to explore, so they were just to uh, keep telling you the the official narrative. You see. So. But still, I mean, you you did a few films on, t on equal topics already, um, but now again you choose this movie and you yeah. choose a new topic, maybe um, I should explain that shortly uh, for the audience. Yeah. It's, um, th your movie is based uh, in here, here now, Bucharest, uh, yeah. where a young um, director, a female uh, director, is um, off to, to set a big reenactment um, of the Odessa massacre, which took place in October 1941 and uh, where a lot of Jews were killed. And um, she's, she's trying to put this huge reenactment, uh, I think, in the middle of Bucharest on a, on a huge place. It's a very historical place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and she's facing a lot of troubles while she's um, preparing this. So yes, that's the structure of the film, more yeah. or less. And on this structure, there's a lot of information of different types being uh, questioned or... Uh, yeah. yeah. 
So you choose a very special moment in history um, that you picture with your movie. Yes, but the the desire was the same. Uh, it, it's a moment that people not only do not uh, discuss, although the information exists now. I mean, if you buy some history books, uh, you can find about that. Uh, if you search in the archives, which are more or less open, you can find the documents after you struggle a little bit to get access to them. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's still um, uh, Romania exactly like Poland or like Hungary, uh, m but maybe a little bit late because Romania was always a little bit late. Uh, started to go on the same uh, direction, uh, uh, and uh, the ruling party is also uh, highly nationalistic and anti anti European, and uh, the Orthodox Church is linked with uh, this power and this nationalism in in very, very strong ways. And uh, I think, yeah, it's, I thought it's the moment to, to make a kind of dialogue between what's nowadays Romania and this uh, past, dark past, uh, which is not talked about. Mm. Was it difficult to film that in Romania? Oh, no, uh, because uh, the, the film is finished now, I mean this year, but uh, the project is already four years uh, long, old. Uh, and we got the main financing two and a uh, half years ago. Mm -hmm. When the things were a little bit more uh, stable and more uh, normal, I would say. But I think nowadays it would be much more difficult to raise money for it. I, I, I give you j just one example. Uh, I shot the part of the film in the military museum, which is of course an institution, as you could glimpse it in the film, uh, it's like a Disneyland of nationalistic history. A lot of yeah. weapons on the wall. Yeah, weapons on the wall and uh, glorifying, uh, glorifying uh, uh, completely the, the the military past of Romania. Uh, and um, also, there's another thing. Uh, now, if you would, uh, so we we didn't have difficulties to to film there. We had to make some cuts in the script. Uh, they asked for that, but they are not that many, that much. Uh, it wasn't a big censorship. Um, and uh, yeah, then we did the film. Um, they w at some point they said, maybe you should uh, go out from the museum, but we still, so they, they kept the, the, uh, the agreement. But now uh, I'm sure it would be impossible. And uh, because for instance, one historian, Vladimir Solonari, who's a, a history teacher, I think in the US, applied, uh, wanted to buy a photograph to pub publish it in a book he wrote. And it was a book also about the Romanian rule in Transnistria in 1940s. And the uh, museum asked them that, you no, know, his book doesn't follow the official historiography line, mm -hmm. so they don't give him any photograph. Also really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would say that now it's a little bit tricky. And with everything, I, I, I mean, it's, uh, I'm not against uh, believers or Christians or people who, who have any kind of uh, religion if they don't try to, to impose it to others by force. Uh, but nowadays, uh, it's really the church became like the main political uh, uh, party in a way, uh, unofficial party, of course, because, for instance, uh, it's a kind of a, a, a two ways uh, uh, thing uh, that the government, the, the ruling party is supporting the church, giving money all the time. And the church is supporting the ruling party uh, because in every village has a priest and the church and people listen to the priest and the priest tells uh, the people uh, to vote for this party. So everybody's gaining something. So now uh, in, in Sunday and uh, Saturday, it will be a referendum in Romania organized by the church, actually. I mean, the church wanted it to limit the gay rights, which don't even exist in Romania for the gay persons, but to limit them uh, in eventuality that they would that ask would for them. I mean, the, that in advance. In advance. So you, you must put in the constitution that the, the marriage is not possible between same sex persons. Although nobody asked for, to allow this uh, law. Yeah. I mean, the, the gay community in Romania is deeply uh, discreet. So. But how does the public react to this then? I mean, in, in your movie, for example, yeah. there are 
um, this director, she, she casts um, a lot of you know, normal people as actors, yeah. and um, they don't only even have problems you know, running away from fire and pretending they're hurt, but also um, they, are, they're deeply, they, seem, they seem to be deeply r racist. I mean, they, all the comments they make, and um, they, don't want to, you know, they don't want to play with, with other actors who are um, Roman, so... Roma, uh, yeah, gypsies. Yeah. Um, is that something you face every day in, in, in the uh, uh, Well, not me personally, but uh, people who belong to s certain communities uh, do. That, that, that's for sure. It's the, it's the same uh, problem. Because you mentioned that, uh, I, I could comment on it because I also made the film. Uh, the film Aferim deals with the roots of, of uh, the, uh, the gypsy problem in Romania, which is uh, the, the, the slavery that this population was kept to for hundreds of years by the Romanians, exactly like black people in the uh, in, uh, United States. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, there's a lot of uh, racism towards uh, Roma population, towards gypsies, but not necessarily in a way that would be uh, obvious. It's not like people go on the street uh, uh, wanting to w w kill the gypsies, or although it's sometimes it happens, even something like that, but... No, it's more in the structures of the society. So the Roma population, it's almost impossible for them to, to, to go to, to, to the mm, normal institutions of society, so to speak. I mean, if you're Roma, it's almost e e for sure that you will never get a, a position like you, for instance, to be a journalist and present something on a website or on a television. It's, you will not access to that. Maybe only some exceptions, but no, uh, it's almost impossible, you see. So this kind of uh, uh, racism is already in the structures of... Uh, of uh, it's not even necessary to be a racist because it works by itself. You don't have to hate them, uh, you see. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you react to that uh, in your movie with a certain amount of um, sarcasm. And uh, sometimes really bad jokes. Um, and uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I just remember this one part where um, the director actually talks about you know how many um, Jews have been killed uh, by the Romanian uh, government, and the number is three hundred eighty thousand, and uh, which is quite big. And then she quotes um, a statement which says that just directly after the Nazi Germans, um, the, Roma the Romans were, the Romanians were the worst uh, if it comes to, um, if to killing Jews. So, um, and her counterpart, this, this official of the, of the government, he just says like, oh no, we always come in second. And that's, so yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's nearly, <laughs> It's nearly evil. So I, I thought if you ever Yeah, but ever uh, this is not my position. I mean, it's not me saying that. I see I, uh, there's a character in the film who's... Uh, who's uh, uh, I, I'm not... Uh, I, I couldn't be uh, uh, considered uh, to take the position of uh, every stupid person that appears in a film and says something stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, of course, but representing that could... could pose a problem, but I really think that, uh, uh, I, or at least this is what I wanted to, to show, uh, apart from uh, what's in, inside the, the discussion of the film, is how is it possible to, to speak honestly about uh, wh what happened, such a tragedy, but not only to speak, but only to also to show the fact that uh, after years pass, it not, then it's not even necessary to be many years, the discussion is getting uh, trivialized in a way. It's becoming superficial. It's becoming easy to, to, to have for many people. It's, uh, I, I think it is what, what, what it is. If we speak about uh, the Napoleonic Wars, nobody has uh, any empathy for that. And if we look even back in uh, antique times, nobody... We just mentioned a war or some, uh, some massacre and nobody knows uh, what it was, you can make jokes about it. And I think that's part of the tragedy uh, as well. That's part of, of it. And I, I didn't want to hide away from that and to show that um, the reactions of the people are very solemnic, very solemn, very serious, because they are not like that. 
It's not... Uh, and it's like uh, also uh, when you see it from the outside, like the film shows, uh, it can be... Uh, it can look uh, much more uh, uh, nasty and cynical than it actually is. And I have one example here. I was invited by my historian consultant, Adrian Flunka to a discussion about Holocaust in a uh, workshop. He was creating it. And after we discussed and everything was very serious, we went out and everybody asked, where is the whiskey bottle? So everybody have drank some whiskey. So if you put that in, uh, in, into uh, editing, it's grotesque. But actually, this is how it is. And we do the same. I mean, we are discussing this now and I'm drinking this uh, wine glass. Do you wish anything to be different? Oh, pff, yes, but I don't think that's uh, possible. I think this is how uh, people are, and after years pass, any tragedy is becoming uh, uh, only a memory and uh, reflection uh, thing. But no, it's, it, you, you cannot, you c nobody can uh, uh, live the tragedies not of the present time. Uh, less, even le uh, less uh, regarding the past. Otherwise, everybody would be become crazy. I think you know, mm. it's like doctors; you have to to have a distance because otherwise you you mm. cannot. In an interview, you were asked um, if there are any similarities to your um, from this movie to the first movie, um, to your first short movie, The Tube with the Hat, uh, that was pretty much awarded and and well received as well. Um, in Hamburg also, I think it was screened in a yeah, short film festival yeah. in Hamburg. Yeah. And then you answered that um, that when it was made in 2006, um, that was when you still believed in, in cinema and, yeah. and uh, that you do now. And that this is something that shows in your movie as well. Can you please explain that to me? Yes, uh, uh, it's uh, f only partially uh, I, I can uh, can explain it because uh, part part of it is a very emotional uh, reaction. But what can uh, what can I explain is uh, regarding the fact that uh, when I was younger, I mean like 12, 13 years ago, the idea uh, to construct a story, to make a film, to uh, the, the dramaturgical uh, uh, construct and to film it uh, was for me very important and it was enough. I, so I, I believed in, in, in this kind of uh, cinema. I believed it has a power or something. It has a, an importance. And years uh, after, maybe it's because I became older than then, uh, I'm somehow tired and not satisfied. I mean, when I open the TV or the computer and watch a film after 10, 15 minutes, usually I become very bored if the film is just a well-made story, a classical story, even if it's brilliant. So I, I think, but it's my problem. I, I need something more to reflect mm -hmm. upon. I, th I want the film to be more challenging than just to make a good emotional story. And you can see that in the film, because uh, this film is not uh, the film of somebody who believes that you, if you can create a story, that's enough. It's m the film of someone who's, who's not, uh, who tries to open the film to different media, to, to make it more complex in a way and more intellectually challenging, so to speak, without losing the uh, entertainment value, I would say. But entertainment... That, that's a difficult word because entertainment is uh, a Dostoevsky novel or a Kafka novel and uh, entertainment is also a, a Harry Potter film. So, But for example, you show um, a lot of old historical movies or even pictures and then yeah. they were discussed. So yeah. you always kind of put them out of, or in a context um, by discussion. I I wonder why you did that. Was it to 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 make sure that we just don't take them too too serious? Or mm. Mm, uh, yeah, yes, yes. I, I think the, this is true. What you say, and may, maybe it's something else. The fact that uh, um, the film is also trying to be analytical to to show as much as I was able to do to show uh, a kind of. Uh, how can one use a camera and editing to analyze things, to analyze a photograph, for instance. 
but not in a, in, the, in a sense that you look at the photograph and discuss uh, the shutter or the exposure or what's in, what's in it. To, when I say analyze, I mean in a, in a more uh, uh, big, uh, big uh, way. And also I was thinking uh, to open up the film to materials which are not considered that they belong to cinema normally. Like uh, what? Like, uh, for instance, a photograph. When you film a photograph, usually uh, the, the people in the crew or after people see the film say, well, this is not, uh, you shouldn't do this because this is not something you do normally in a film. You don't put a photograph. You don't put somebody reading a text for, for, for five minutes. And I had this in I, uh, the film. I had this in the mm -hmm. film as well. Uh, you don't have somebody uh, watching a archive film for three or four minutes. So the film is, my film is constructed using all this because I said, why not? I mean, the film could incorporate them, could open up and invite these things inside it and become uh, a reflection tool, not only a storytelling uh, mm. device. Sometimes it makes it hard to watch as well, because, yeah. I mean, if you rest on a picture, for example, you, you have a picture of uh, Jews who have been hanged, yeah. in, f and you rest on it for, for like several minutes, and yeah. that creates a very strong <laughs> feeling. Uh, yes, but that's not, yeah, it, it is this, uh, but it's also when, when the photograph is on the screen, there are sounds, people are uh, talking about it, and the the even bigger uh, thing, uh, the more sadder thing, is not only the death of those uh, innocent people, but also the fact that we can discuss, as we said earlier, we can discuss it more or less relaxed afterwards. And you could see it was really grotesque at, at the film uh, shooting of this scene because we had several photographs and we put them and discussed which is better, you see. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, uh, well, you had to do this, but in, in the same time, it was I realized the the drama in in this thing. Mm. You know, the, the the director of photography putting a light on them and say, "Well, this now, oh, that's better. You can see uh, the contrast is better in this photograph. So let's use this one." So uh, yeah, it's. Uh, you had a lot of... Um, but I think this is, uh, uh, you know, it's the same people who write books about Holocaust or something like that, or about other tragedies. It's the same, I think. It's, uh, it's, uh, I just took both, uh, and I think it's very interesting, it's a Le Monde uh, supplement, how you call it? It's not a... Uh, it's a Le Monde, but it's not a newspaper, it's a magazine, mm -hmm. uh, which is called uh, 550 Photographs that change history or very important in the mm -hmm. history. And it's all kinds of photographs, iconical photographs uh, or images of other kind, and they explain them. And if you would see how they would choose it, them, it would be the same. Should we put this film with the African boy and the hawk that comes to him, or should we put mm -hmm. the photograph from Tiananmen Square? You see. You said you, you got hate mail yourself because of your name and and because of because what you're of doing the as well. <laughs> no. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't transform myself into a victim because I'm not a victim anyway. But um, uh, it's, uh, it's. Uh, I will show you something. It's uh, <laughs> nice. Thank you. We'll be back soon. It, it's a lot of uh, nationalistical uh, press of different kinds. <coughs> And uh, for instance, uh, there were some websites, you see, that I don't have a problem with somebody criticizing the film, of course not. But uh, many of them, it's uh, li like this. They made a, a photograph of me and they put a, <laughs> a yellow star, <laughs> like oh, you could okay. see, like that. It's, uh, and they said, uh, because I, I, I won a crystal globe, that's the, the title of the award, which yeah. was Mikhailo Ivory said. He just won it, yeah. This is uh, what this Judas got uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, 30 money, 30 coins, like mm -hmm. in the Bible, you see? And uh, uh, for betraying the Romanian people who is hosting him with a hospitality and uh, which Jude is hating with all his guts. They say. So, well, these kind of things are all over, but I... How do you react on stuff like that? I don't react. You don't react at all? 
No, I think, I think the worst is to react to this kind of thing because in the moment you react, you make it more important than it is. I think. Uh, no? If, do you feel safe? Yes, 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 yes. I, yeah. Like my friend Florin Yepan says, uh, the Romanian fascism is really, really cowards. Uh, it's, they, just, <laughs> they just bark, <laughs> but they don't, uh, they don't have the... They don't bite, yes. It's, uh, and I believe it's true. I think it's... Uh, yeah, but isn't that... In a way, too easy. I mean, uh, I got used to somehow. It's uh, and it's not. I, I mean, there's also uh, positive reactions. I mean, uh, a lot of people are appreciating the films and discussing about them. And I try to concentrate uh, on them instead of this. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyhow, is there um, any outcome you, you wish your, your film might have? Somebody said I'm paid by Mossad. <laughs> this is the last uh, rumor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, <I'm>, uh, <laughs> no worries. I was just wondering if you, if you anyhow wish for any um, special outcome your your film might have, like any special reaction you're looking forward to. Uh, well, I, I don't believe a film can change everything. Like people uh, say, I made the film and wanted to change the world, and uh, I, I think. Uh, uh, a film, for me at least, and I'm speaking now in the position of the viewer, of the spectator of films, is something that if uh, uh, makes me research more about something or think more about something, I think this is a good film. Um, so I hope the same uh, with the film. I really hope that uh, not to be, uh, not the people say, well, it's great, it's amazing, I cried, I laughed, I don't know, I don't care about these kind of reactions. Uh, I would be very happy if people say, okay, I saw the film, and made me think of something, and after that I started my, by my own to maybe think about this more, or to research more, or maybe to make something uh, out of it uh, using this film as a research tool somehow. Mm. For me that would be the most important, to, to enter the film in a system of, uh, of thinking. Because I really think film is about thinking, uh, about observing reality with uh, spe specific tools, and uh, and reflecting about reality and uh, entertainment is only the 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 the, the least important thing I, I think. You said as well that you you choose a female director because you don't want anybody to say, oh, that's him. He's picturing himself as a director in this movie. So yeah. is this something? Do you, but do it you was want wrong because every anyway people said they the still same. do it, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. um, but is it something you you're especially looking forward? To, to not be kind of um, inter intermixed with the message of your movie? Like you as a person and your movie to be oh, separately uh, somehow? Uh, yes, it, it is, but it, uh, it's unavoidable uh, some uh, mix uh, in the same time because... Uh, but I believe something else, actually, and maybe this is because I like uh, the, the, the film critics starting from, uh, from, starting from Cahiers du Cinema, uh, the fact that uh, 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 their idea was that uh, an auteur, somebody who, who's expressing himself or herself through a film, is not necessarily somebody who's writing the script or has the idea for it. For, for, for them, Hitchcock was an, an auteur or uh, Howard Hawks or, I don't know, Hollywood directors. And I believe the same uh, meaning by that, that everything in a film expresses the ones who are making the film. Um, so I don't, uh, I, I, I don't think that only the uh, character in the film represents me, but everything else in the film represents me in a more complex way. I think. So I don't. I when when people say, well, so uh, okay, the, the director is this character in the film. I think it becomes more poorer, poorer, more poor, the the interpretation. Mm. What else are you working on now? What 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 do you want to show us next from from you? Oh, it's uh, three films actually. Three. Three. Only two are in the making now. Uh, one of them it's somehow related to that because my historian consul consultant has a, a huge archive of another massacre made by the Romanian army in Yash in 1941, just before, uh, immediately after the. Uh, uh, war, war started, and it's a uh, it's a film with photographs and with archives. Only archives will will use. It's more like an essay, a documentary essay. First, I didn't want to make it because I said, okay, I, I'm fed up with this uh, theme. But he showed me the archive, and it's so impressive, and nobody knew it, uh, and full of details. That I said, okay, let's do a film with that. 
And also I uh, make a, another film which is somehow historical, uh, but it takes place in the 1980s. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, based on a play by a playwright, uh, Janina Carbonariu. She's also a, a, a very talented theater director. And she made a play based on a Securitate. Securitate was the secret service like Stasi in, uh, in, uh, yeah. in uh, Germany. So it's like a Stasi file and she transformed the text of that into monologues for a mm-hmm. play. So all the words come from this file and are really powerful, I think. And I want to mix that with uh, archive image from, uh, from the Romanian television from the 80s, which nobody knows. I mean, they are just trash in an archive that nobody, very few people use it actually properly. So uh, I, I want to make two levels of history. One is the secret history from this file, mm-hmm, yeah. and the other one is the official history as is, uh, uh, exists in these uh, images. And to make a cross-editing, I don't know, I, I'm still working on that. Sounds very exciting and... Um, well, I um, hope so. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. So, um, Thanks. Thank you very much for being here and talking to me. Thanks and for the All the best for your uh, current movie and all the ones to come. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>